the Bears are searching for their third coach since 2013 after winning just 27 games with 53 losses in that span, but the way Dan Hampton sees it, the franchise's fortunes might be different if former team president George Muggs Hallis Jr. hadn't died of a heart attack in December 1979 at age 54. My rookie year, the last game, I come down to breakfast and everybody's acting real quiet. And I said, who died? And they look at me and I said, what? They said, Muggsy. Muggsy Hallis died upstairs that night before the game, said Hampton, a Hall of Fame defensive lineman and member of the 1985 Super Bowl champion Bears. Hallis, Sr., wanted Muggsy to run the team. And when he died, then he knew the next in line was Mike, McCaskey, and he went to his grave wanting to avoid it at all cost because he knew Mike didn't have that type of intuition and mentality. When George Hallis Sr. died in 1983, Virginia Hallis McCaskey and sons Michael and George assumed operational control of the team. It's strange, the McCaskey's grandfather I'm talking about Mike and George and the rest of them their grandfather invented the NFL, but they don't know much about football, Hampton said. So think about that your grandfather invented the Model A and became Ford, but you don't know anything about cars. There's kind of a disconnect. Everybody thinks it's about X's and O's. That's part of it, but a lot of it is about knowing the people, the coaches, the players. Mike, Ditka said, in the documentary, 85, the greatest team in football history, we had a lot of good players and we had some people who didn't need to be on the team. My job was deciding which ones were which. Okay. The McCaskies don't know who is who yet. That's why they had to go out and hire people to find Phil Emery, which was a disaster. A search firm to find him? Are you kidding me? They need to lose whatever credibility they had. And then they had to go out and hire Ernie Accorsi to find John Fox, GM Accorsi's defensive coordinator with the Giants for four seasons. Again, people that know will always know, and people that don't will never. Hampton said he likes the McCaskey family and feels they've invested a lot into making the team better, but they just don't have the courage of conviction to make sound football decisions. Football coaches basically were players that loved the game and wanted to stay in it, so you're not dealing with really sophisticated people, but everybody has a story and they're going to tell you how great they are, Hampton said. You have to know what to look at to identify who can cut it. Hallis, Sr., knew that Ditka could cut it. Muggsy's the one that hired, general manager Jim, Finks. Michael McCaskey was team president when the Bears won in 85, but he later ushered out general manager Jerry Vanesey and Ditka and shouldered the blame for the botched hiring of coach Dave McGuinness in 1999, which ultimately led to McCaskey losing operational control. Hampton, a pro football Hall of Fame defensive end who still rankled McCaskey wanted to to cut him before his final season in 1990, said, Mike has done no favors to the Chicago Bears and the Chicago Bear fans. But the rest of the family, they try to do everything they can.